hello everyone this is satvik and in this video we'll be discussing about cross-site scripting so without getting any delay let's start so guys uh, since you guys are asking me regarding os top 10 so this is i'm gonna continue that series so this is the one uh, which related to that so cross-site scripting is also known as xss okay you can see it somewhere else and there are many types of cross-site scripting out there uh, but the only thing we'll be concentrating in this video is reflected excesses and i'll show you uh, example okay how you can uh, exploit that vulnerability so if you look into google or if you look into the wikipedia so this is what you'll be getting into so if you type what is excesses so this is all the details you'll be getting into but uh, what i'll be uh, saying you is what i learned from my experience so guys uh always the web applications are hosted on a server so there are many types of attacks like server side attacks so what we try to do is we attackers try to attack the server itself and uh, those are different things okay but now coming to the c uh, xss it is a client side attack so what we try to do is we try to uh, manipulate the user side okay so what we try to do is uh, we try to exploit the user stuff like uh, stealing his cookies or uh, changing his passwords and stuff okay so and even this cross-site scripting is having much more value uh, value so if you report any cross-site scripting vulnerability you can get some bugs okay and one as i told you previously that one we'll be discussing is a reflected excesses on a demo website and if possible i'll continue this video by showing it on some real websites so basically what we try to do is uh, if you look into any uh, url so if you look into so i'm showing this on damn vulnerable web application guys okay, so if you look into the source code so as always the web applications are built using uh, css html and javascript okay there might be some advanced things but these are the basic things okay so what happens is so let, let me come to this so there will be something like uh, so what we try to do is if you are a little bit familiar with the html so those are built in tags and it has some tags it has some elements it has some attributes and stuff okay so what we try to do is we try to manipulate the uh, what you call the input that we are providing and we'll make a script running so script is nothing in this case is like javascript so the basic scripts would be something like uh, script alert okay so this is a basic thing okay uh, there are many things but this is a basic a payload that we will be using out there uh, on some things okay uh, so now coming to uh, exploitation okay so guys if you want to be good at cross site scripting you need to have a little bit of knowledge over uh, javascript as well as uh, html okay so that you can be a little bit good so what we try to do is we try to attack uh, we try to inject some scripts okay uh, some javascripts or things like that and some attributes or things like that and we try to manipulate it okay so let me show you in action so guys uh, if you go to the damn vulnerable application so by default uh, set the security low okay and click on submit and then here guys you can go to somewhere like uh, reflected access is reflected so let me zoom in a little bit so guys this is how uh, the page looks like so it is asking us for the name okay so i'm right now i'm showing the methodology that i follow uh, in order to find out some cross site scripting uh, bugs or things like that so let me enter my name and let me click submit so guys here you can see that uh, satvik so as the name suggested so whatever the input that you are providing to the web page so it is getting reflected so if it is getting reflected there is a possibility that uh, we can show something called reflected accesses and also guys uh, there are two types like reflected accesses and also stored accesses as reflected accesses is not uh, persistent so it will be only available for that uh, particular instance of time but if you take something like stored accesses it will be stored in database so i'll show you in uh, next video so no worries regarding that so guys uh, as I, as we had entered satvik here and if we submitted we can see that our input is getting submitted on this page so what uh, what I basically do is I look into the source code. Let me hit Control U on any browser, and then simply search for Satvik or the input that you provided. So let me zoom in a little bit. So guys, uh, here you can see uh, this is a basic HTML, and here you can see my name is getting uh, reflected on the page. Okay. 
so what we can uh, do basically here is uh, we could implement some tags and we can see whether uh, we can exploit this or not so let me come back to the script let me copy the script okay so there are many scripts out there guys uh, so this is a basic script that i'm using but if you go in li little bit in depth you'll find so many scripts like this like image tag or things like that okay so let me uh, keep this here guys so what so if you're a little bit familiar with the javascript you can see something like alert one is like it show a pop-up uh, which is uh, saying one so let me hit submit so my db defender is causing uh, let me click over there so here you can see something like a one is getting popped out okay so let me hit okay and now let's simply see the source code by simply hitting Control u and uh, if you come back here to this guys uh, let me zoom in a little bit so this is the input that we provided uh, to the web page and this is how it is uh, reflected on our original page so if you could see here as we provided a html tag so our browser thought we are executing a html and it executed it and it had shown some what you call an alert okay so if you ask me what is the use of uh, printing alert one or things like that so if you are a little bit familiar with cookies so whenever you logged into a particular site uh, the website or the company provides you some cookies uh, which could be used as an authentication key so with the help of xss what you can do here is sorry document dot cookie okay uh, let me hit submit and here you can see that uh, we are getting a payload so what we can see here is we can see the uh, what you call cookie so if i'm successfully able to export this document dot cookie to any particular server out there uh, with the help of netcat or with anything so i can get these cookies and i can paste it in uh, i can use the help i can make use of cookie editor and i can paste these things and i can simply log into that particular user account so this is how uh, dangerous this uh, xss is and it is also being rectified nowadays since i had shown you on a simple website okay uh, so where i had implemented like an easy website okay but so guys uh, that's the basic thing regarding cross-site scripting and there are many mitigations and stuff so that's all for this video but if you want uh, a little bit of medium or if you want to make if you want you to make uh, me to continue this series do let me know in the comment section so this is all for this video i hope uh, you got some clarity regarding this thing so really thank you for watching this video this is satvik signing off